So you, you keep Shabbat and kosher, like you keep Shabbat like by the Jewish halakha, like you, no phone yeah, yeah, yeah. or electricity. Yeah, yeah, I, I the keep. Whole nine I, yards? Yeah, for sure, man. I keep Shabbat you know, halakha. I keep Shabbat no no oh. no phone, no electricity, um, and so I just stay locked into that. For sure, man. And you study, right? You, you know, I study every day, bro. I have a four o'clock a.m. lesson. Really? Wow. Uh, uh, with we go over like we're going over. It's review for me, mm -hmm. but we're going over the laws of Shabbat with the rest of the class. And then I have like a two two p.m. afternoon lesson, going over kashrut, just learning how to really kosher your kitchen, as far as food, utensils, and so forth. Um, and then I have friends that live in Jerusalem. And my, my, we, we learn on the, we read the Mishnah, uh, we're going over the Gomorrah. Really? Wow. You know, we, we... It's deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah. that. I mean, I, I read Mishnah and Gomorrah sometimes, and yeah. that gets you in there. That's, yeah, for sure, man. It's tough. It's hard for me because it's, 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 it's better to learn with friends for me because my, my reading in Hebrew is slow at the moment, mm -hmm. right? So I read very slowly, and then I have to get the translation on what I'm reading. Uh, so it's great to either learn with the rabbi or with friends that can help with that breakdown. And that was what you know got you to come play in Israel. You think? You, like, you yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. When I came, when I came in connection. 2010, uh, that connection, that connection got me to play in Israel. Uh, I wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to be here. I wanted to live here. I wanted to be a part of the culture. Uh, and so, um, that that fuel somewhat led me to come to Israel and then to play here, and I haven't left since. Hmm. Interesting. And you think, so where does where that put you from a basketball perspective that just you, you feel like it's just giving you the, the, the you know, just put you in a different, you know, maybe atmosphere, maybe, maybe just you being more relaxed, more just, you know, connected to, yeah, to your I roots? mean, you know what, for me, man, it's a lot of learning when it comes to Judaism um, and when it comes to, like, character traits and your mitos. Mm -hmm. It helps me, it helps me also, too, like, to control my anger uh, control my thoughts, control my speech, control my, well, guard my eyes. These, these lessons that I'm learning along the way is helping me to become a better man. And that's, and that's, and that's what I'm ultimately all about is just being able to become like a better individual. And, you know, and, it, and this is helping me a lot. I love that and it connects you, you know, at least with my family, just really put us together. And, you know, especially us being in the U.S. for 10 years, we, you know, we kind of, you know, you miss some of the, you know, traditions that you have here, you know, being sure. in Passover, Passover or Yom Kippur, you know, this situation is, you, you know, if you live in Sacramento, for example, you, you don't really feel Yom Kippur, it's just a regular day on the outside. Right. And then when you start doing it, when, you know, you preach it to your kids and you're talking about the history and your wife and you kind of, you know, it brings oh, you together. Beautiful. It's beautiful, man. Listen, I, listen, when I was with the Knicks and I was learning big time and I, I, I felt a little bit embarrassed to talk to my teammates about it because I felt like hmm. they wouldn't understand. I felt embarrassed. It's actually you saying it's interesting you saying that. I felt embarrassed when I got to the U.S. that I, I knew nothing about Judaism. Growing here, knew nothing. Um, you know, I knew Shabbat and I knew the basic, but I, I didn't know how to read the Bible. I didn't know you know some of the significance beyond you know religion, holidays, etc. Sure. And now I'm like you know I felt uncomfortable you know by doing that. And I said you know what it's it's just not right. I gotta I gotta do better. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, com it comes with, for me, what I've noticed, it comes with maturity, right? When I was in my 20s, I was young, wanted to party, wanted to hang out, wanted to just be you know, a rock star. And then as I, as I got older, I started maturing more. Mm -hmm. I started realizing, wait, there's more to life than just parties. Let me, let me disconnect myself from that, from that world and connect myself back with Torah. Mm -hmm. And when, when I was with the Knicks, um... We had Yom Kippur came around, and when Yom Kippur came around, it was always during training camp. It happened to me my rookie year. I remember that. <laughs> it's, 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 it happened to me. It's always during training camp, and my right. trainers knew what I was, where I was holding. They knew, like, all right, Amari right. is going to fast. He's not drinking water. He's not eating, but he's still, it's still training camp. Mm. And training camp is the hardest time of the year for us because we got to do a lot of sprints, right. weight training, right. more sprints like overdose of like sprints and cardio. Right. And so my training, my training would stand beside me every time and just watch me see if I faint. And I remember <laughs> that. And my, my teammates were looking at me like, what is this guy doing? You know, but I, every year, Yom Kippur came around, training camp. I would, I would run my sprints, and the trainers would just be right there watching me <laughs> so, that, so to prevent me from fainting. That's funny. It's crazy. 